Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Alexander Jones from the Food and Agriculture Organization at the United Nations. Uh, hello there and thank you for speaking with us. Uh, we know that global food production is one of the uh, key themes in the IPCC report that was just uh, released. Tell us about the main challenges uh, that the global food production systems are seeing going forward. Thank you for having me. Well, as you said, uh, this is a bit of a perfect storm and we're facing a major challenge because on one hand, we have committed to eradicating hunger throughout the world, but to do so, we need land, we need land surface, but at the same time also needs to be used for mitigating the impacts of climate change. We need that land to store carbon. We need that land uh, to, to save it both in soils and in trees, and at the same time to produce better quality food and more food. So it's, uh, as you pointed out, a perfect storm. Well, uh, in terms of mitigating uh, the impact on uh, climate change, there is also the individual level that has uh, some sort of important, w importance. What can people uh, do in order to minimize the human impact on the environment? Well, everybody needs to be well aware of their personal choices in terms of diet, in terms of consumption. Uh, the report also highlights very clearly that we're wasting about one third of all the primary production of food. That alone could offset a huge amount of, uh, of the problem. We also need to look at the composition of our food baskets. Everybody needs to be aware of the impacts of their individual food choices on climate change, and not just climate change, but biodiversity, habitat loss, and land degradation. Uh, I think the key message of the report is that land is a finite resource. We are overexploiting it at this stage, and we need it not just for better production, but also for food security. When you have a figurehead such as Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil or Donald Trump in the U.S. who are downplaying this whole uh, environmental issue, how much more difficult does it make it your job? Well, I think there's a pretty broad consensus around the main drivers. Uh, I believe the latest figure is a 98% scientific consensus. So I won't, I won't get involved in the political sides of that. And we have excellent cooperation with the scientific agencies of virtually all the governments around the world. So there's a huge... A uh, group of people working on the issues of climate change, each in their different ways, and we need to contribute to that. But we need to work at the policy level, we need to work at the national level, and we need to work at the level of individual choices in, in deciding what we're going to eat and how we're going to produce that. Need to work at different levels indeed in order to mitigate this issue. Thank you very much, Alexander Jones, for uh, this uh, insights. Now, our correspondent Jessica Saltz is in Brandenburg in Germany, and she spoke to the owner of an organic walnuts farm about the challenges posed to sustainable food production in the country. Well, Anna, and I think the challenge that all farmers are facing right now is how to adapt their farming methods to deal with the very dramatic changes in weather and climate we've seen in Europe in recent months and years. But of course, organic farmers face the ex extra challenge of keep keeping the cost of their production competitive against uh, the much lower costs of industrial farming and indeed imports. And to discuss this further, I'm joined by David Geyer. You are the owner of this organic walnut farm. Um, uh, Mr. Geyer, your um, um, methods here for farming are sustainable, they're organic. Why is this so important to you and how are your methods different to non-organic uh, farming methods? I think that is the only way if we want to give a future to our kids. Um, organic farming practices does not only mean to stop the exposure to pesticides or chemicals, it means also uh, farming close to the nature means also building up the soil and, and, and keep the water clean. So if we want uh, to, to build, uh, to, to grow a healthy food, we need a healthy soil. And uh, if we treat our soil with pesticides and chemicals, uh, with, with such uh, harmful substances, uh, the soil will be not able to regenerate itself. And the healthy soil has the ability to store a lot of carbon, a lot much more, much more carbon than a conventional farmland can. And that's a big measure uh, for us to combat the global warming. And the word organic has become very fashionable when it comes to food consumption in restaurants and in, in shops, not only in Germany, but also in Europe. Is this changing the way farmers are producing? Have you noticed more farmers in this region turning towards producing organic food? Well, uh, yes and no. Um, if we look at the statistics in uh, 2010, in the year 2010, we had a share of 6% of organic land uh, of the total uh, farmland in Germany. Uh, 2018, uh, we had 9%. So we have an increase, uh, but it's, it's too less. And uh, there is no 
much time uh, we have to change that. And uh, since all the farmers are under a big price pressure uh, in under the production um, conditions, uh, the only way we see is that the politics helps the farmers and uh, and gives uh, the right input uh, for for organic farming. And uh, right now. <clears throat> The EU fundings are, are, are given just per hectare and uh, no caring uh, which way uh, someone uh, is farming. And I, I think that we should be stopped. No, no fundings anymore for who is polluting the environment. No fundings anymore uh, for who is, is uh, um, uh, not respecting the human rights.